what's going on y'all what it is so let's go ahead and slide on this topic and i want to talk about something that i found interesting in regards to kim porter i was doing some research and when i came across this it really threw me for a loop but before we get into that i want to talk about diddy's ex bodyguard actually coming out and speaking more in regards to the situation that transpired between diddy and cassie so He's been very active on his Instagram page and I guess he's saying that the time is now. Everybody is going at Diddy. And since my name was implicated within Cassie's lawsuit, hey, why don't I tell my truth? Why don't I tell my side of the story? But anyway, what I want to do right here, guys, is play a couple of clips of Diddy's former head of security, Roger Bond, telling his truth. And then I'll be right back. Time when you're in a situation that may seem like a good situation, but if you're not waking up happy, or if you disgruntled, or you really don't want to be around that person, you find every excuse to get out of there. And I got diabetes. So my excuse was, I can't be with you every day. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm losing weight. I'm doing that. But in reality, it was, I was sick. I was sick of you. I was sick of everything that was going on around you. I was sick of having to cover up everything that you did. That's, I was sick. Cassie spoke on it. She said, yeah, I jumped on it. I jumped in between it. That wasn't the only time. It was other times and it was other people. Wax, it's easy. People say, well, why did you stay? Or why did you allow? Or why did you um keep going? Why did you keep going to work? Why do you keep paying your kids school fees? Why You can't just walk away. It's people that hate being sanitation workers. It's people that hate being police. But why do they still be the police? Because they got bills to pay. This is America, ain't nothing free. So sometimes you gotta stay places even though you don't want to. Now take that. All right, so you guys just heard that, and it seems that Roger has a lot more that he can actually say, and I wonder, is he going to let loose? Let the cannon loose, my boy. If you got more information, put it out there. You know, he's already drowning. Why not finish the job? Now, I know the old saying that it's not a good thing to kick people while they down, but if I had information on Diddy, I'm coming in with two feet, with the corns on top. So at the end of the day, bro, go ahead and speak your truth. Let it all loose. We know that you have some very vital information. But anyway, on yesterday, Revolt TV announced on their Instagram page that Diddy decided to step away or step aside as the chairman for the company. And it says here, Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of black people throughout the country and the African diaspora. And then they go on to say our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our culture. And that continues. Now, when it rains, it shits, all right? Forget that it pours because Diddy is catching hell right now because it's also being reported that a charter school that Diddy opened in 2016 I believe in Harlem is parting ways with them too. Check this out. Another one. Less than eight hours, somebody else let Diddy go. Now is Capital Preparatory School. They said, following a comprehensive evaluation, a decision has been made to end the partnership between Capital Preparatory Schools and Sean Combs. While this decision was not made lightly, we firmly believe it is in the best interest of our organization, organization's health and future. All right, so you guys just heard that. And in my estimation, I feel that they should have been the very first ones to cut ties with Diddy because we don't need Diddy around or associated with no children at all, right? But anyway, what I want to do right here, because I got a lot of emails where people were feeling that Erica Kennedy was actually talking about L.A. Reid and not Diddy. And I ran across this amazing doctor that broke this down so eloquently. She was able to uncover some things in regards to Erica Kennedy talking about exposing Diddy at one point in time. Now, I do encourage you guys to go follow her. She's a brilliant lady with a brilliant mind. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip and I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. Let's talk about the mysterious death of Erica Kennedy, who was one of the best friends of Kamora Lee Simmons. She was actually the maid of honor in her wedding and the godmother to two of her children. 
Let's get into it. When Erica Kennedy graduated from college, she began working as a publicist for various top fashion designers, including Tommy Hilfiger and Sean Combs. Please pay attention. In July of 2004, Erica Kennedy released a book called Bling. This was about a small town biracial girl named Mimi who wanted to make it big in the music industry. And then she encounters a music mogul by the name of Lamont who owned a label titled Triple Large Entertainment. Now some say that this is loosely based on Diddy. Erica's book went on to become a New York Times bestseller. In 2004, she said, everybody kept talking about how scandalous the book was. I really didn't see the big deal. I knew I could write a story about a P. Diddy party and show these people what a scandal really is all about. Erica Kennedy turned up dead June 13th of 2012 at the age of 42. Now the cause of her death has never been released. And I find that all very interesting. And as we all know, Kimberly Simmons' other best friend, Kim Porter, turned up dead November the 15th of 2018. Now they said that it was pneumonia that she passed away from, but there's more to that story. Initial coroner conducting the autopsy on Kim Porter's body was Ed Winter. Now he said that it was problematic and that further analysis needed to be performed. Uh, so he was strangely taken off of the case, however, and someone else took over. Two weeks later, her death was ruled as being caused by pneumonia. Ed Winter had investigated numerous deaths of celebrities, such as Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Brittany Murphy, and others. Now, allegedly, after people started requesting for Kim Porter's death to be further looked into, or for them to reopen the case, Ed Winter uh, turned up dead. And they say that it was unspecified natural causes at the age of 73. Now, I find it very interesting because of the timing, you see. The timing of his death is right around the time that people were supposedly asking for her death to be further investigated. And those people were allegedly Kamorley Simmons and some of Kim's family members. Please pay attention. Some people just didn't believe the final autopsy report and the fact that Ed Winter had said the results were pending and he was still trying to conduct further investigation and then suddenly turns up dead. Yeah, all very suspicious if you ask me. Now we know that Kim was supposedly writing a tell-all book and a lot of it was about her relationship with Diddy. And so recently, some excerpts from that book have been released. And there were said to be, by an anonymous source, a lot of things that were very salacious uh, that some wouldn't want to come out, specifically Diddy. Uh, so please pay attention. And let's not forget that after Kim's demise, Al B. Sure made a post uh, basically stating that he didn't believe that she actually died from pneumonia either. And there were many who had their own suspicions. In the post, Al B. Sure said, I do know very clearly that hashtag Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some bull-ish. Really? This is where I get into trouble. We just celebrated our son at Quincy's New Deal and Christmas special with Netflix. And she was in fantastic health as well as laughing seeing me and at Diddy's mutual exchange at the theater. I'm going to leave it here. And after that cryptic post, well... We all know what happened to Al B. Sure. He suddenly started experiencing renal failure and then ended up in a coma for two months. Yes, I do find this all very interesting. Kim supposedly told Al before she died that she felt someone was following her and Al told her to call the FBI. And now he also made a post that's now been deleted uh, saying that she was running from something only to later come back and say that she was running a marathon. Kim's former stylist also allegedly came out and said that Diddy purchased that 24 karat gold casket for Kim a month prior to her demise. Sources say that Diddy and Andre Harrell got into an argument because he was supposedly helping Kim to write her tell-all book in 2017 and then later decided to write a tell-all book himself. Uh, they say that he also fired Diddy from his label. They say that Andre and Diddy got into several altercations at the company and that he basically knew about the shady backhanded deals that Diddy was engaging in. Sources also say that Andre Harrell questioned Diddy about the toxins that were found in Kim's system during the initial autopsy report that Ed Winter was working on when he was fired from the case. And I find it interesting, but did I also mention that friends say that there was blood on Kim's pillowcase when she was found deceased and also a small trail of blood from the bedroom leading to the bathroom. And Jaguar Wright says that Heavy D was also supposedly writing a tell-all book before he passed away. Also, celebrity plastic surgeon, Dr. Frank Ryan, who performed Cassie's 
breast implants in November of 2009, and of which Diddy complained about them, said they were too big, and insisted that he take them out and do them over the next day, not even giving her time to heal. Uh, he was very determined, and Dr. Frank Ryan wasn't thrilled about it, but he mysteriously turned up dead in August of 2010, just months later. Now, he supposedly drove over a cliff when he was making a post about his dog. I also have questions about this picture of Diddy sleeping on top of Cassie. It looks very controlling, like someone who's trying to make sure that she doesn't leave or sneak away while he's asleep. Now that's just my take on it. Also, what is going on in this picture? What does this mean? Is there some hidden message here? Because it looks very similar uh, to this picture. The one of Kanye West video where he had all of these celebrities and famous people sleeping in the same bed. So clearly something subliminal as far as I'm concerned. All right, so you guys just heard that. Now, what I take from what she had to say about the Erica Kennedy situation, maybe the book wasn't based off of Diddy and Kim Porter. But the fact that she made the notion that if you really want me to write something wild and salacious, then all I would have to do is write about Diddy's parties. And the fact that she would even mention that could have been enough motive for Diddy to be like, all right, you want to talk about my lifestyle? Let me go ahead and get you out of here. Good night. You know, it's just a threat of her saying that she could write a book on Diddy's parties and his lifestyle that could have motivated him. That's all I'm saying, y'all. So whether the book was about Diddy or not, Erica knew a lot about Diddy because she hung around him, right? She worked for him. But anyway, guys, I want to move on to this Kim Porter situation. So this morning when I was doing some research to prepare for a video, not this video, another video that I was working on, I came across something that was odd. So I reached out to my plug and I asked him about the situation and he reached out to one of Kim Porter's friends. I want to read you guys this email and I'm going to show you what the hell I saw this morning. It's very weird and very strange in my opinion. And it says here, hey brother, I reached out to a close friend of Kim's and she is saying that Diddy is trying to erase all traces of Kim off the internet according to Kimora. I'm told he is trying to get her Instagram page taken down, certain interviews she has done, and also I'm hearing that he is paying an editor from Wikipedia top dollar to delete her information. This is highly suspicious. She said that not only Diddy is behind this, it's about others who could be affected that were associated with him. Their execs in higher positions within Hollywood that are frantic and panicking about the information that could leak that would incriminate them. Them. Kim's friend says that she's about to talk and she would not remain quiet anymore. She has reached a limit. She even asked me how do you go live on Instagram. She also said that she always wanted to say something but she was hesitant because she didn't know how she would be received by the black community. She also said that Kim's nose wasn't the only thing that was fractured by Diddy. She said that Kim suffered broken ribs too and she has all of the receipts. I told her not to go live just yet fresh off of emotions. I'm told Kimora is rattled to see that Diddy is trying to remove any trace of Kim off the internet. All right, so you guys just heard that. Now, if you go to Kim Porter's Wikipedia page, it clearly states an editor has nominated this article for deletion. Again, an editor has nominated this article for deletion. So they're trying to delete Kim Porter's Wikipedia page, but for what reason? Something is extremely fishy here. All right, something is extremely fishy. Now, again, I want to protect the integrity of my platform. All the information that I conveyed to you is alleged, but at the end of the day, again, something ain't right here. But anyway, I'm gonna let this go right here. I have something else to work on in regards to commentary. So I want you guys to drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about this entire video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.